That's why it's important to, for us to have you and major figures like KRS One. Now, how did you guys meet? Well, I thought I was a school teacher, had an after school program, Act Now, African Children of Tomorrow Now. And part of that program was taking the students to go see various lectures. Some of the lecturers that I named before, Dr. Ben, John Henry Clark, you know, going to these different study groups and what have you. This is when KRS was doing human education against lies. And he was doing a lecture tour. He went to Ramapo College. Then he went to William Patterson College. And he came to Montclair State. Now, we, we followed him around as a part of the, the study group, Act Now. And I would always ask questions, have something to say. He got used to seeing my face. When he showed up at Montclair State, I was a student there. Everybody on campus knows I'm the biggest KRS one stand. I know you're going to see your boy. I know you're going to see your boy. So we, I get in there. I go all the way to the back because I don't really want to play myself and be all thirsty sitting up front. Like, you know, I didn't want to do that. So I'm all the way in the back, standing up. Chris walks in, you know, and the place is packed. Three, four hundred people in, in the joint to hear him speak a lecture. He comes in, sees me in the back. Hakeem, I've been looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time, yo, he knows how. He said, what's up? <laughs> and then... Um, I know you were hype. I would have been hyped. I was, I was amped. But, you know, I, you know, I had to play cool. I couldn't be looked too Yeah. <laughs> so, so was after, after the lecture, I want you to come backstage. I want to talk to you. So he invites me backstage. I go back and he's like, yeah, I'm doing, you know, doing this lecture tour. I would like you to come and open up for the, uh, for me and Dr. Jeffries. And then I did a couple lectures with him and Dr. Jeffries, basically talking about the educational system from a hands-on point of view, being in the system at the time. And then, um, didn't even tell him I was doing music. Like didn't even come at him like that. And, um, about a year later, the company that I was signed to, we parted ways. I chased Chris down, followed him like various places. Eventually hit him off with a demo tape. He called me back some time later, like, yo, I'm in D and D, why don't you come to the studio? Pew, we was there. Yes. Yeah, that's how it went down. And it was it was magic from there. You know, how do you you say you was a stand? You know, what are some of the most significant things or ways cameras one influenced you? How I rhyme, what I rhyme about, um, knowing that it could be you know, so quote unquote cool to be knowledgeable, to stand on principle, you know what I mean? Like just the um just the whole, you know, the what the culture is versus what the business is, the separation of the two, knowing that there is there's these two things. You got the corporate, the business, but then you got the culture and you gotta handle both with respect. You can't bring the corporate all the way, you know, to the to the culture all the time. You definitely can't bring the culture into the corporate all the time. You got to balance it out. So, you know, that was a... a yeah, because, you know, shout out to Rockness Monster from Hope the Sculptor. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was fortunate enough to um, interview him, and I asked him, do you feel like hip-hop died? And he gave the most dopest answer. He was like, hip-hop on the radio died because it was never supposed to be there. With Hip-hop is always the streets. There you go. That's exactly the truth. That is exactly the truth. Hip hop never dies because yeah. we're doing it. As long as we're doing it, it's alive. You know. Yeah.